it's never easy for a white person to talk about racism and racial issues, um, particularly today, uh, for various reasons. So, you know, I hesitate a little bit, but it's top of mind for me right now, and it's something that um, I'm trying to understand and work through. So I'm just gonna go with it. And, you know, the hope is people will understand, you know, if you've watched the videos or if you know me or just, you know, understand the way I think that obviously the topic is rampant with ways to offend and, and say the wrong thing and, and all that. Um, that's in no way my intent. My intent is just to, to think through this more. Um, and... I fully acknowledge that as a white man um, who likes to think that he's pretty self-aware, who likes to think that he is not racist for a variety of reasons, um, perhaps there's some stuff that I still have blind spots about. Um, and maybe that'll show through in this video. And maybe it's something that I don't see, but others might. And if that's the case, in many ways, all the better. Like, I'd rather that be exposed if that is. I hope it's not true. But if it is true, I'd rather know about it and, and fix it. So again, with that caveat, kind of just going to dive into it. Um, so racism is obviously a huge topic today, the, the, the George Floyd situation and, and all the other issues and just the racial injustice and the movements that have been going on. Um, and I spoke about them on, on other videos. Um, what, what I'm trying to work through, and I say this obviously as, as a white man, um, there's one of the big stories in the news over the last day or two is Nick Cannon, who's, who's a celebrity rapper, talk show host, does a bunch of stuff now, um, made some some comments on his podcast or talk show, whatever it was, um, some that were anti-Semitic uh, and some that were, some would call racist. I know some people don't believe a, a black person could say something that's racist, but said something that was uh, offensive and generalized generalized the whole race of people based on the color of their skin and, and made some disparaging offensive remarks about them. In this case, white people, the way he framed it was more around people that don't have mel melatonin, uh, melatonin in their skin, um, that, that they're lesser is actually the words he used and, and some other things that he said about it. So I bring that up and I recognize even bringing up that topic that there may be a blind spot there, right? The fact that that got a reaction from me and that I'm making a video about it, whereas maybe every day there's things that are offensive and racist said about black people, and I'm not on here making a video every day. I, I, I get that. Um, I, have, I have made videos in the past about things that have happened like Rayshard Brooks and George Floyd and, and others, but, but I get that. So I recognize that up front. And my point of the video isn't to say how offended or how hurt I am. Um, so... It's, it's not in that vein. It's in the vein of trying to understand the dynamics at play when we're trying to address racism as a country and as a society today. And what, the reason I think the Nick Cannon um, situation is interesting is because it seems to represent or showcase one of the major issues that seems to exist. Um, and the way I would categorize the issue is there's this, there's this micro macro dynamic of how we talk about racism. Um, and the way it seems to be playing out, again, using the Nick Cannon situation as, as kind of the, the proxy for it, um, there are many black people and some white people for that matter, and, and all different peoples of color, but there's, there are many black people today speaking out on racism um, in, in what I would call kind of a macro way, talking about white supremacy in America, talking about you know, the problems with white people in America. Um, and obviously I'm not black, so I don't mean to speak for black people, but I would imagine um, it's coming from a place of, hey, you know, this has been going on for hundreds of years. It's documented from the beginning of our country, you know, with slavery and, and how racism has played such a big role and continues to today. Um, so there's no, there's not a lot of question in their minds around that, right? It, it, it's, it's something that they know very deeply. And to talk about it at that macro level seems very natural and right. Um, and even in the Nick Cannon situation, there have been people, some, some black celebrities at least that I've seen, a handful, that have spoken out in support of him, uh, or at least haven't really condemned what he said. And I think that's very confusing for people, for some people, um, some black people, some white, a lot of white people. 
Um, because this, for many people, they feel like, hey, I, I thought we were against racism. I thought we were for equality. So I get it. Like, I'm on board. If, you know, people are, black people are being hurt by this country and things we're doing, like, we're there. Let's, let's change it, right? Think what happened to George Floyd is horrific. It happens too much. We need to fix it, right? We need to fix the police. We need to fix systemic racism. Let's do it. Let's, let's, like, we're all for it. But then they get taken aback when something like this Nick Cannon situation happens where it's not condemned completely um, by certain people. And the feeling is like, I thought, I thought we were on the same page here. I thought we were all on team equality and, and let's fix the problem. So although it's rare, although it's nowhere nearly as dangerous as it's been from a white person to a black person perspective, you know, throughout history, um, if somebody's saying something like that, it's, we have to address it, right? There's the Martin Luther King quote um, that I'm probably going to butcher right now, but, you know, injustice for one is injustice for all or, or something along those lines. Like any type of injustice for any group becomes an injustice for everybody because you can't, you can't let it live anywhere, right? So a lot of people have that mindset. So when they hear people, um, Puff Daddy, Diddy, whatever the name now, um, spoke out and, and supported Nick Cannon as an example, a lot of people are angry, right? And and th that's the dynamic that I that I'm trying to understand better for myself, obviously, as well as for society. Because you take that point from people who are, you know, from many white people and just others that believe any racism is bad and inequality, right? That whole mindset we just spoke about. Um, they see somebody like that speak out in support of Nick Cannon, and they're they're almost horrified. They can't imagine it. Like, why why would you support that? Like that's, that goes against everything seemingly that, that you're about, that we want equality, we, we want to get rid of racism. So how could you support that? And again, I'm, I'm just trying to understand and empathize, but I would imagine there's people on the other side, um, often people of color, who are thinking, hey, like, again, remember what we're talking about here. Like this, this type of stuff has been going on for so long and like so much hurt and pain and death has been associated with racism in the other direction, right? White to black. Um, that when somebody speaks out on something like this, like, yeah, okay, maybe not the best choice of words, but it's, it's, it's different, right? It's, it's a different thing. And, um, it's, he, he's still part of our community and there's still a cause to be fought for and you know all those types of things I think start to enter that, that kind of macro view of it starts to come in of I'm not gonna I'm not gonna you know crush this guy over some things he said that were offensive you know arguably or maybe definitely um, because you got to keep the big picture in mind you got to keep that macro view in mind that of what's happened here and, and what it would have been like for black people. But I think for many people, they're not looking at it through that macro lens. They're looking at it through a very micro lens. Like, hey, this, this is racism. This is somebody saying something offensive to, about a whole group of people based on the color of their skin, right? It's very, it's very in this moment, in this situation, it, it's, it's very clear, um, black and white almost, no pun intended. Um, and, and that, that disconnect of macro versus micro, I think is at play here. I think that's what drives a lot of this. Um, because me, I, I, I could say when I heard what Nick Cannon says and then I see people supporting it, there, there is a physical, a visceral reaction in me that's like, wait, hey, <laughs> like I, I'm white. Like you're saying, you know, some of the things he said was that for white people, they're, they're lesser than black people and they're, they're more savage and they're more evil. Um, that's offensive. Like I, I can say that because it's about me. Like that's an offensive thing to say uh, in the moment. Um, uh, I don't appreciate it. I don't like it. Um, for, for somebody to say that about a whole group of people like me, I have a son, I have family, right? That's, that's offensive in that micro situation. But what I'm trying to do is empathize and step back to the macro and understand why, although that is offensive, um, when you look at it through the lens of the macro, the way some of the people are, right? Um, another example is uh, a radio host, Charlemagne the God, uh, I think also a little bit spoke out, maybe not as much as, as others, but in support of Nick Cannon. When you're looking at it through that lens of this macro view of, of what's gone on in society, it's a, it's a different view. It's a different perspective. It's a different take on it of like, yeah, yeah, maybe it wasn't the right thing to say, but again, keep the big picture in mind. 
And honestly, I don't, I don't know what you do about that. I feel like that's so much the crux of the problems we have today. I talk to many people. Uh, naturally, my family is, is white um, and, and different people that I know. And I think I see this issue come up often where you hear people say, listen, I'm not racist. I'm all for equality. I think we need to improve things. I get it. You know, what happened to George Floyd is horrific, you know, that type of thing. But what's being done today, what's being asked of white people, the way white people are being spoken about, as if, you know, you need to be apologetic for being white, as if you should feel bad about yourself for being white, as if you should turn off your whiteness, as if, you know, it's it's something where you should you should bow down to, to people of color because of, of, of what's happened. Um, they're, they're, they, they can't get on board with that. They just can't. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't click for them. It doesn't calculate for them. We're, we're working towards equality. Why would that be what I'm expected to do? Why should, if, if, if the problem was we were, we were treating people badly because they were black, why would we just switch it to treating people badly because they're white? And I get that. I think that's that micro view of looking at it very individually of like, why, why should I be apologizing? I get trying to fix the bigger problem. But I think from the other side, from the, from the black people perspective, from the people of color perspective, they're looking again at that macro lens and they're thinking like, hey, but, but it's true, right? Like maybe you individually don't need to, you know, apologize and repent or whatever because you haven't done anything maybe. Um, but as a whole, or not as a whole, but you know, when you look at it at a macro level, there, there has been this movement of white people being racist against black people at scale, um, oppressing, holding people down, in some cases, you know, savagely murdering and killing people. Um, so like, uh, again, speaking as that, that, that side, the black person, like, I'm not wrong for saying that it's true. It's what happened. I get it might be upsetting for you to hear because it's your people, but it's true. <laughs> So in Nick Cannon's case or whoever, people are thinking like he shouldn't have to apologize for that because it's, it's what happened. So again, I don't, I don't have an answer here, but I think it's at the crux of what we need to kind of try and solve for if the goal is to, to find a better place and to come together. I think. I don't know. Maybe the things that have been done to black people throughout history are so horrific that this, this recalibration and, and this resetting needs to happen. And it needs to happen this way where white people are going to feel bad about it for a while because that's just the way it balances out. Maybe. Um, maybe it's, maybe not. Maybe there's got to be a way to do it, you know, more, I think how like a Martin Luther King talked about it, where it's, it's got to be through love. It's got to be through bringing people together. Um, maybe there's some middle ground that I'm not fully seeing yet that others are, you know, people that are, that are fighting for equality and doing these things. Maybe they just have a better perspective on it that I don't. Maybe it's just white people being too sensitive because now the thing is turned on them. You know, I, I don't know. I don't have the answer. But I do think this micro-macro dynamic is at the root of a lot of it because it's, it's as we've talked about with other topics. In some ways, in some ways, each side isn't wrong, right? The white person, myself, whoever, that's offended by what Nick Cannon said and feels like, hey, that's not right, man. Um, it's, it's not wrong. <laughs> it's not wrong to feel that way. He did say something that judged people just based on the color of their skin. But at the same time, the people that are looking at it and saying like, but it's true. And, you know, at the macro level, white people have done these horrible things. They're not wrong either. So you run into one of these situations where when both sides are right and they feel so strongly that they're right, this is what you run into. It's not all that different than the current political environment where really diehard liberals and really diehard conservatives both feel like they have the moral high ground. They're absolutely right. And what you get is just this crazy friction and fighting. Um, and that's what I fear it looks like is happening when it comes to these racial issues. Um, so again, something I'm trying to think more about and work my way through and try and understand. And I understand the complexities as a white person trying to understand, you know, people of color and white. And it's, it's a difficult thing to do. I think it has to be done through dialogue and conversation. It's difficult to do in these times, but um, I think it's something that we have to we have to figure out.